Thank you to Curiosity Stream and Nebula for sponsoring this video. Sign up for tons of content, including this video ad free, using the link in my description. Morning, everyone. I'm Soph. These are my notes. And yes, it turns out that high achievers aren't necessarily the best people to go to for advice. And this isn't me being bitter because I don't think I'm a top performer, obviously. But there's recently been a set of experiments that show, even though we expect advice from high achievers to be better, being so doesn't automatically mean your advice will be more valuable. These studies also showed something super weird, right? That we rank champions' advice as being best even when we don't know who it came from. How? How do high achievers give off a confident advisory air solely through their writing? Well, let me explain. The findings are from this paper from April of this year, written by David and Daniel from Harvard and Timothy from the University of Virginia. Thanks, lads. And the whole thing is based around the classic family fun game of Word Scramble, which is, which is basically just boggle. In each round, you're shown a 4x4 four four square of letters and have 60 seconds to form as many words as you can from adjacent ones. And this game was the basis of a bunch of different sub-studies within the paper. Over a thousand people were asked to play Word Scramble, and then they were asked who they would rather get advice from. Kel Surprise, they said, people who did well, please. And I like this first experiment, because it's basically there to affirm what we pretty much already know, right? That we expect people who perform better to give better advice. Don't take anything as a given, you know? That's good science, that. A fresh group of 78 people played six rounds of Word Scramble. They generally improved over the rounds, which is just a little side note, because that confirms that there is some sort of skill to the game that can be honed over time. Everyone was asked to write down some advice and to rate it, and the high achievers ended up rating their advice as best. So at this point, everyone is rooting for the high achievers' advice to be best, from people who just played Word Scramble in the first round to the high achievers themselves. So it was time to put that to the test. Another new set of people were asked to play a single round of Boggle, I mean Word Scramble. Some were left to their own device and some were given advice from one of the previous players. But that could have been anyone, from the creme de la creme top advisors to the bottom of the barrel Word Scramble trash. Then they played five more rounds. Turns out guidance helps. Players who received advice improved compared to those who'd received none. But it didn't matter who the guidance came from. Advice from high achievers didn't help any more than advice from the others. So knowing that their advice was no more valuable in practice, the obvious conclusion is that we simply think it will be because we know that they are a top performer. But no, actually. Players were asked to rank advice without knowing who it came from, and despite this anonymity, advice from top performers was still ranked highest. Which brings us on to the obvious question, how or, or why? Word scramble is old news. We're done playing games, right? Instead, the researchers got the kids involved and recruited two undergrads to go through all the advice and rank it on five different categories. One, authoritativeness. Two, actionability. Three, articulateness. Four, obviousness. And five, shoulds versus should nots. They also counted how many separate suggestions there were among one piece of advice, like look for shorter words, look for parts of words, believe in yourself. After cross-comparing the advice ratings with this information, they found that the only thing that predicted how useful something would be perceived was the number of suggestions within the advice. This wasn't correlated with being more helpful, but just with people thinking it would be. So high achievers were more likely to give more advice, which was then perceived as being better. Quantity was being confused with quality. Okay, so why wasn't high achiever advice better? Well, simply, being good at something doesn't necessarily make you a good teacher. And here's a few reasons why. Well, firstly, if you're good at something, whether it's a natural talent or something that you've worked hard at, you can end up being too disconnected from a beginner level for your advice to be accessible. There may be things you do automatically that you wouldn't even think to advise someone on, that you don't even recognize that you're doing to then advise someone on. 
Secondly, you may not have honed your teaching skills. Being good at something doesn't mean you know how to show or tell someone else how to be good at it. I mean, look at experienced academics who get lecturing positions. That doesn't always work out best for the student. Perhaps the best advice comes from people who've honed the art of giving it. And this could be high achievers, but it could also be people who are a bit lower on the ladder of performance too. And then there are also some things that high achievers often benefit from that you can't teach directly, namely luck and circumstance. Luck is a bit less relevant with word scramble, especially in this scientific context where participants will have been shown the same boards of letters each time. But I think in general life, luck can play a huge role in success, especially if we look at it in the context of careers. I remember the lovely Simon Clark did a video uh, four years ago now, I checked, where he talked about proactive serendipity. And that's a phrase that's really stuck with me. It's the idea that a lot of things are down to luck, but the more you put yourself out there, and do things, the more likely it is that you'll get lucky. And I love this phrase because it makes it clear that even if you work really hard and do everything you can to succeed, it isn't always a guarantee because Lady Luck has her finger in our pies. I hope our hands are clean. But especially if someone is seeking tips from you or if you feel like you're an expert, it can feel a bit awkward to just advise someone to be lucky. I think, you know, sometimes I've seen a few examples where successful people fall into the trap of avoiding recognising luck's role altogether. Both externally, they don't recognise it to people around them and I think internally, they don't recognise it themselves. But whilst Luck's role may be less influential in word scramble, our favourite pastime is an example where players' histories and the circumstances relating to those histories can still have an impact. Having played it for about an hour whilst wasting my time when researching this video, I definitely think that experience playing word games will give you an advantage. Having a broader vocabulary will give you an advantage. Heck, not being dyslexic will give you an advantage. And none of these things that arguably have the greatest influence on success can be achieved through quick fix advice. Now, it may seem silly to extrapolate some findings based on a word game to life as a whole, and I'll touch on the limitations of these experiments in a moment, but it's no secret that some people end up with circumstantial advantages that make it easier for them to become whatever they become, a lawyer or a sports person or a YouTuber, whether that's, you know, a wealthy family who can support them or essentially webbed feet. <laughs> Beneficial circumstances manifest themselves in advice like, need to buy a house, live with your parents rent free for a while, or billionaire Melinda French Gates doing a course on Masterclass about how to give money well. Okay, it's about giving in general, not just giving money, so here's my little caveat before the Melinda stands come for me. And maybe one reason that all the advice in this study helped equally is that once you've accounted for luck and circumstance, there's ultimately a limited number of implementable suggestions. Especially for a game like Word Scramble, if everyone ends up giving similar advice, Advice, then the outcomes from following those different sets of advice wouldn't be so different, right? Again, relating this to real life, you can imagine that a lot of the advice for growing a particular skill or career might end up being kind of similar. Essentially, different flavours of work hard, depending what it is you're trying to succeed in. Why did high achievers give so much more advice? Well, these are kind of just my theories, because who knows, but maybe they were trying to account for their success in ways that weren't just, I know a lot of words, like they were essentially trying to explain away their luck or circumstance. Or maybe it was because of ego. Like, if you believe that you're the very best like no one ever was, then you may end up thinking that every thought you have is a good one, and so you say more of them. Both of these things remind me of that infamous Australian real estate mogul who said you should stop buying avocado toast if you want to buy a house. With a sprinkle of, in my day, I worked my arse off on like you lot. Um, that is a classic example of A, circumstance ignorance, and B, maybe just stop talking. Anyway, whatever the reason was for the high achievers chunky advice, the researchers believed that actually, the fact that they gave so many more suggestions kind of got in the way. Word scramble is so fast paced, for those of you in the game you know, that it's kind of hard to implement more than one piece of advice at once. So piling on more ideas isn't necessarily a good thing. Which smoothly segues me into one of the biggest limitations of this study, that it was so short term. If players had had longer to implement the advice they were given, then maybe top performers ramblings would have proved better. That has the potential to flip this whole study on its head, because what if top performers gave more advice simply because they had a lot of good tactics, and if only the study had been longer, then the players could have had a chance to implement them all. 
As this suggests, word scramble, despite what diehard fans think, won't apply to all teaching scenarios, and that's kind of the biggest limitation of this. But of course, all studies have limitations, and we can still get valuable insights from them, and this study is no different. It shows us that in some circumstances where we expect high achievers to give the best advice, we may well be mistaken. To quote from the researchers themselves, tips from the top aren't always worth top dollar. Snap. And I think that the best advice that this study on advice can give you is to just be a bit more wary of who you heed. Because a ranking isn't everything. Giving advice is a big business, from Skillshare to good old books, but when learning a skill, maybe consult someone who's a good performer, yes, but also a good teacher. Perhaps it'd be better to chat to someone who's faced similar difficulties to you, who understands your circumstances. The more someone relates to you, the more their advice will. Even for a game of word scramble. Oh wait, actually, we're not playing that anymore. It's it's time for Science Charades with Soph and Cell, hosted on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming service set up by a bunch of creators as a place where we can create what we like without worrying about the limitations of YouTube. If you take a creative chance on YouTube as ABBA intended and make a video that's a bit too different from your others, you risk getting less watch time and your videos getting buried accordingly. Nebula removes that worry and means it can be home to more playful stuff, like a video of me and my girlfriend playing science themed charades. Or charades, I flip between the two. But I can say what I like because I've got the suit on. It's also safer to cover topics that might get demonetized on YouTube, like this video I made about accidentally finding an orgasmic cult. And it's not just me making extra stuff on there, obviously. Philosophy Tube shared a behind the scenes documentary about how she makes her videos, and Wendover's done a couple of different game shows too, which may have inspired my idea, but I don't have the budget he has, so instead of countrywide races, it's these two miming science words to each other. You can play along at home though. On top of all the extra stuff, every one of the over 100 Nebula creators also post their videos up there with no ads or sponsor bits. And myself and many others always make sure to post them up earlier on there than they go up on here. On top of that, we've teamed up with Curiosity Stream where you can get access to thousands of high quality documentaries on all sorts. If you like this video, I really recommend The Science of Success. It investigates patterns linked to success, including a story on why the Mona Lisa in particular became so famous, a really interesting study on music, and the guy who came up with exploding kittens. And I'm glad to say this documentary doesn't shy away from the roles of randomness and circumstance. And hey, in this game of life, everyone's a winner, including you. What's your prize? Well, this isn't deal or no deal, it's just deal. Your prize is a deal, you see. You can get access to ad-free and exclusive videos from over 100 creators on Nebula, plus all those sexy documentaries on Curiosity Stream for a gobsmacking $14.79 a month. Wait, no, sorry, a year. $14.79 a year, what? Okay, game show presenter persona aside here, shut up please. That is such a deal. It equates to less than $1.25 a month for access to both Nebula and Curiosity Stream. So to get that deal, just go to curiositystream.com slash sofsnotes. You'll be supporting the channel when you do and also supporting Nebula, which is something I'm so proud to be a part of. Enjoy the charades and if you play from home, let me know how you do. That's it for now though, and this was a really interesting video for me to make because I really enjoy walking that line in science between getting excited about things and having a realistic interpretation of them. So I hope you liked it. And if you did, like this video if you like it, share it if you share it, subscribe if you subscribe it, media my socials if you want to do that and comment with your best piece of advice for anything a sport a career how to live how to cook something i don't know give me your best advice in this case it is solicited all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching have a lovely day and remember don't confuse quantity with quality and i'm not just saying that because i've posted 63 videos in six and a half years and i thought that was going to sound worse to be honest but i'm quite proud of that 63 videos that's quite a lot what up angela terry poos leo syndrome and all my patrons thanks so much for being there, you big legends. Oh, word scramble. My hair's so big because it's full of secrets. Secrets that you can get access to for $15 a year. I feel like I look a little bit like Steve from Stranger Things, just a tiny bit. Just realised I wasn't recording, which isn't ideal, but it's so hot and sweaty and I was giving it my all. Okay, don't mourn what you can't get back. Rards or charades? I'm just gonna say sh charades because I think that is how I say it. What do I say? I'm having a crisis here about my own self-representation. There's a painter on the other side of the door. I feel like he's listening and laughing at me. Want more? There is more. Here's one more. Here's a playlist more. And here's a Patreon more. That's the end of the video. Bye.